where most people look at the largest ships in the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, one question immediately arises. Are they aircraft carriers or destroyers? The answer is deceptively simple, yet deeply complex. Officially, Japan calls these vessels helicopter destroyers, or DDHs. But for anyone studying their size, design, and capabilities, it's clear that these ships blur the lines between traditional destroyers and light aircraft carriers. In this video, we're going to examine why Japan's helicopter destroyers from the first Haruna-class and Shirin-class ships to the modern Hyuga and Izumo classes make more sense than you might think. The story begins in the aftermath of World War II. Following Japan's surrender, the Imperial Japanese Navy was dissolved under the terms of the Potsdam Declaration. Remaining ships were disarmed, and many, like the battleship, the Nagato, were claimed as reparations. Elders were pressed into service for the repatriation of Japanese soldiers or for mine-sweeping operations around Japan. These functions were initially carried out under the Second Bureau of the Demobilization Ministry, and later by the newly formed Maritime Safety Agency, which helped maintain the country's remaining naval expertise. Japan's post-war constitution, drawn up in 1947, contained Article 9, which famously renounced war as a sovereign right and prohibits the use of force to settle international disputes. Nevertheless, the prevailing interpretation has allowed Japan to maintain armed forces strictly for self-defense. The United States, concerned about the emerging Cold War and the threats of the Soviet Union, supported Japan's limited rearmament. By 1954, the Maritime Safety Force was separated from the broader agency and reorganized into the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, the JMSDF. The early JMSDF was built on a defensive, coastal-oriented framework, supplemented by transferred U.S. Navy destroyers. But the strategic reality of the Cold War quickly imposed a particular focus, anti-submarine warfare. The Soviet Navy has invested heavily into a powerful submarine fleet in the Pacific, and Japan, situated on the edge of potential confrontation, needed a fleet capable of detecting, tracking, and, if necessary, neutralizing underwater threat. This requirement would shape the JMSDF's ship designs for decades. By the 1970s, Japan's Cold War naval doctrine demanded more capable anti-submarine platforms. The Haruna-class destroyers represented the first generation of true Japanese helicopter destroyers. These ships were not merely modified destroyers with a helipad. They were built around a central hangar capable of housing up to three SH-60JK anti-submarine helicopters. These helicopters were the primary tools for anti-submarine warfare, extending the ship's detection and engagement range far beyond what hull-mounted sonars and ship-borne weapons alone could achieve. The Haruna class displaced over 5,000 tons standard, exceeding Japan's post-war restrictions. But the pressing need to counter Soviet submarines justified their size. The designation DDH, or Helicopter Carrying Destroyer, was a political and bureaucratic compromise. A way to field a powerful, aviation-capable warship without breaching constitutional and budgetary limits on aircraft carriers. Haruna-class ships featured forward concentrated armament. Anti-submarine weapons included ASROC launchers and Mark 32 triple-tube torpedoes, integrated with hull-mounted sonars to detect enemy submarines. Defensive systems included the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missiles and Phalanx close-in weapon systems. These were installed strictly for points defense against missiles and close-range aircraft. 
emphasizing that these ships were not designed for area air defense, but only minimal self-protection. The Shireng-class destroyers commissioned in the early 1980s were an improved follow-on to the Haruna. At 7,500 tons full load and 159 meters in length, they were the largest warships built in post-war Japan at the time. Propulsion was upgraded to 70,000 horsepower, achieving 32 knots. Like Haruna, Shireng class ships were designed around the central hangar and flight deck for the SH 60JK helicopters. Crucially, the Shireng class incorporated advanced anti submarine warfare sensors, including a hull mounted bow sonar and a variable depth sonar combined with a towed array sonar system. The variable depth sonar is deployed on a cable and can be lowered to different depths beneath the surface, allowing the ship to detect submarines hiding in thermal layers or deeper waters where hull mounted sonar is less effective. The towed array sonar system, meanwhile, is a long sensor array towed behind the ship that can detect quieter submarines at much greater distances far beyond the range of the ship's own hull-mounted sonar. Together, these systems dramatically enhanced the ship's ability to locate and track enemy submarines across a wide range of depths and ranges, making the Shireng class a potent anti-submarine warfare platform. Their weapons were again heavily skewed towards anti-submarine warfare, with points defense systems limited to RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missiles and Phalanx close-in weapon systems for short-range aerial threat. This clearly shows that the Shireng class ships were ASW platforms first, not modern multi-role destroyers focused on air defense. In essence, both the Haruna and Shireng classes relied on helicopters as the primary anti-submarine warfare tool, supported by shipborne sonar and torpedoes. Their defensive missile systems were strictly secondary, emphasizing that these ships were designed to counter submarines, not to project air power or to engage in area air defense. The later Hyuga and Izumo classes would expand helicopter capacity and flight deck operations, but the core mission, anti-submarine warfare, remained central. Building on the legacy of the Haruna and Shireng classes, Japan developed the Hyuga class helicopter destroyers in the mid-2000s, and later the Izumo class in the 2010s. These ships are often described as flat tops due to their large flight deck style design. But despite appearances, their primary mission remains anti submarine warfare, not fixed wing power projection. In that sense, they are not modern destroyers optimized for area air defense, nor are they traditional aircraft carriers designed for long range strike operations. The Hyoga class displays approximately 18,000 tons full load, with a length of 197 meters and a beam of 33 meters. Each ship carries a large central hangar and a full length flight deck, capable of operating up to 11 helicopters simultaneously, although typical deployments involve fewer aircraft usually seven Mitsubishi SH-60K anti-submarine helicopters and two utility or search and rescue helicopters. The flight deck and hangars significantly expand the helicopter-borne anti-submarine warfare capability of the JMSDF, allowing simultaneous multi-helicopter operations, rapid deployment and onboard maintenance of aircraft. The Hyoga class is equipped with hull mounted sonar and variable depth sonar. The hull mounted sonar provides standard detection of submarines in the surrounding water, while the variable depth sonar allows operators to adjust the depth of the sonar transducer to detect submarines hiding in different thermal layers or at greater depths, increasing detection range and flexibility. 
Unlike the older Shireen class, the Hyoga class does not carry a towed array sonar system, instead relying on helicopters and the associated dipping sonars and sonobuoys for longer range submarine detection. Armament remains deliberately for self-defense. Two phalanx close-in weapon systems and two CRAM missile launchers provide short-range protection against incoming missiles and aircraft. But the ships do not carry area air defense missiles, emphasizing that they are not intended to challenge surface fleets in a high-threat anti-air environment. The Izumo class represents a further evolution, becoming the largest surface combatant ever operated by the JMSDF. With a full load displacement of 26,000 tons, a length of 248 meters, and a beam of 38 meters, these ships dwarf the Hyoga class in size. Originally designated as multi purpose helicopter carrying destroyers, both Izumo and her sister ship Kaga were designed from the outset to support potential future operation of short takeoff and vertical landing or Stavo aircraft, such as the F 35B Lightning II. Despite their capacity to operate fixed wing aircraft following ongoing modifications, the Izumo class ships remain fundamentally anti submarine warfare platforms. Helicopters remain central to their mission, carrying out anti-submarine patrols, surveillance, and rapid response tasks. Sensors include hull-mounted sonar and again variable depth sonar, optimized to detect submarines at varying depths. Again, defensive armament is limited to two phalanx close-in weapon systems and two CRAM missile launchers, providing only short-range self-defense against missiles or aircraft. These ships are not equipped with area air defense systems like a traditional destroyer. While the Izumo-class ships have generated considerable attention for their potential to operate Stavo aircraft, it is important to contextualize their capabilities. Even with deck modifications for F-35B operations, these vessels remain light carriers at best. Their full load displacement of 26,000 tons and flight deck size are considerably smaller than conventional fleet carriers, such as the US Nimitz class or the Gerald R. Ford class fleet aircraft carriers. Unlike those ships, the Izumo class lacks catapults or arresting gear, meaning it can only operate Stavo aircraft, which limits sortie rates, payloads, and operational flexibility. Stavo operations impose additional constraints. F-35B must land vertically and perform a short takeoff, which reduces fuel and weapons capacity compared to conventional carrier-based fixed-wing aircraft. The Izumo-class flight deck can accommodate only around a dozen F-35Bs at a time, and the ships do not carry the extensive aviation maintenance, ordnance storage, or sortie generation capacity typical of full-sized carriers. In other words, while they can operate fixed-wing aircraft in a limited fashion, they are far from matching the striking power or operational endurance of a conventional aircraft carrier. This limitation, however, does not diminish their effectiveness in their primary role. The Zumo-class ships are perfectly suited for anti-submarine warfare aviation. Their large flight decks and hangars allow multiple anti-submarine helicopters to operate simultaneously, supported by shipborne sensors. In this context, the Izumo class serves as a highly capable, modern evolution of Japan's helicopter-carrying destroyer concept, rather than as a true fleet carrier. It is worth noting that, Despite the primarily anti-submarine focus of the Izumo class, there is an ongoing debate among analysts and within Japanese defense circles regarding the potential for offensive strike operations. 
Some observers argue that once fully equipped with the F-35B fighters, these ships could, in theory, carry out limited airstrikes or rapid response missions against contingencies involving North Korea, or in a more extreme scenario, disputes with China or Russia, such as a heated confrontation over the disputed Kuro Islands. Japanese officials, however, maintain that any such operations would remain defensive in nature, emphasizing deterrence, territorial protection, in their words. Nonetheless, this grey area has drawn international attention, and the Izumo class has become a focal point in discussions about the evolving interpretation of Japan's post-World War II constitutional constraints on offensive weapons. Acknowledging this debate reinforces that while these ships are not traditional carriers, their potential capabilities continue to generate strategic discussion. Today, Japan's helicopter destroyers are among the most distinctive warships in the world. The Hyoga and Izumo classes may appear as mini carriers with expansive flight sticks and the capacity to operate multiple helicopters simultaneously. They provide a flexible platform for anti-submarine operations, personnel transport, and very limited fixed-wing aircraft operational potential, while remaining politically and constitutionally defensible, although I suppose that depends on who you ask. In short, Japan's helicopter destroyers are not carriers in the traditional sense, nor are they modern destroyers focused on fleet air defense. Their evolution from the Haruna and Shirane classes to the massive Hyoga and Izumo classes illustrates a continuous, cohesive doctrine. Helicopters at the center of anti-submarine fighting forces, with defensive systems as a secondary measure, and fixed-wing aircraft as a potential supplement rather than the defining capability. For Japan, this approach is both practical and strategically sound, demonstrating that appearances can be deceiving when it comes to warships.